Hi, this is Eric from the African Homestead. It's time for a field trip. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to take a field trip with a group of people up to the Liberia International Christian College in the city of Ganta. It's up close to the border with Guinea. And the purpose of the trip was to tour the LICC School of Agriculture and learn more about the Agricultural Research Center, which they call the ARC. It is a beautiful facility. In addition to their focus on agriculture and livestock, they have some of the wild animals that are native to Liberia, as well as a beautiful array of the plants and flowers that come from the Liberian jungle. So join me as I talk with Bill Sebald, the director of the Agricultural Research Center. Well, this is Bill Sebald, and he is with, uh, well, why don't you tell me a little bit about the organization? Yeah, I'm Pastor Bill Sebald with Hope in the Harvest Missions International. And here we are in Ganto, Liberia at a place called Liberia International Christian College and on the campus our own area is known as the ARC, the Agricultural Research Center, where we have five acres where we demonstrate uh, a program called Farming God's Way. Um, we have both plants and animals um, we do some research and development here and then from here we also do outreach where we go into villages we teach the Bible using farming God's way and uh, we're just happy to have you here today as part of the Christian Revival Church Association Eric I know about you through Facebook and you you look, of course, much different in person than you do on your Facebook page. I hope page. that's good. Oh, yeah. So uh, if you could tell me a little bit about maybe the, all the livestock you have here. What all are you doing related to livestock? Well, again, the livestock is primarily for demonstration purposes. You notice among the chicken in particular, um, there are improved genetics here. Liberia has a a problem that they have some of the smallest chickens in the world. They're not very meaty, not very beefy. And uh, so improved genetics that have uh, bigger birds, but then we have many varieties. We have guinea fowl, we have pigeon, we have quail, we have turkeys. The turkeys were brought from Kenya, they're doing well. We have African ducks. We have Peking ducks, the number one meat duck in the world. Um, they are doing very well here. We then have rabbits, we have guinea pigs, we have goats that are in particular here for milk. Liberia is not milking. Not at all. Not at all, but um, we've done some here. It's gone fairly well, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. We do obviously use the the males for, for meat still. So a little bit of, of demonstrating quite a bit of livestock. And then of course, we have our uh, tilapia fish breeding ponds. We're hoping to add pigs soon. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to have cows, but you know, that may have to wait a little while yet. Yeah. Um, being from uh, Wisconsin originally, America's dairy land, <laughs> it would be great to have some milk cows one day. Yeah. So. Um, and then again in the fields, we're growing a combination of annual and perennial, um, things that are local and commonly grown here and things that we're introducing. Yeah. So when it, when it comes to farming God's way, uh, there's a spiritual aspect to that. And then there's also, um, a, a philosophy of growing, yeah. uh, and, and utilizing God's creation. Could you share a little bit? about both of those? Sure, I would love to do that. Um, Farming God's Way, a program that originated in Africa, um, Grant Dryden from South Africa put together the, the particular program that we're using, and it allows us to teach God's Word, the Bible. Um, we get to talk about Jesus as much as we want to. 
um, discipleship, all kinds of things, but also as a tool to teach agriculture um, in Liberia that desperately needs to grow its own food. And so the technical aspect of farming God's way involves some key principles that we do not burn, we do not plow, minimal soil disturbance. Rather, what we do is we have planting stations in which we dig a hole, we put inputs in that hole. We put in either ash or lime to neutralize acidic soil, which is a common problem here. We then put in either compost or manure or even anthill soil so that there is food for that plant. And then we mix it with the rest of the soil on the top. And then we put what we call God's blanket. We mulch, we do not have bare soil. That planting station will get three seeds. Um, we will thin it to two seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and we also use permanent markers, permanent pegs, so that in the future we know exactly where there was a planting station the year before so that we can continue to put inputs only right where we need them and not have to develop every square inch of soil over time with the compost, the manure, the mulch. We will build our soil so that your, um, your productivity your harvest increases year after year. Yeah, so it's a long-term building of the soil, improving production of the plants, uh, but focus very much on individual holes instead of, I, I, sometimes yeah. I tell people that when, when you go and spread compost over your whole garden, um, in, in addition to feeding your plants, you're feeding all the weeds too. You're feeding everything else and all that compost uh, that isn't utilized is, is really waste and so, it's good to see you focus that. Yeah, and it's needed. it's difficult to produce that much compost that you would cover an entire field because Liberia doesn't just need people with uh, kitchen gardens. Um, they need farmers that are that are producing scale type fields of uh, multiple acres and hectares um, to have plenty of food to feed the animals and to feed the people in Liberia. Yeah. Okay, just a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, the next one is, what what do you see as, as something, as, if, as you've come to Liberia, you've been here a handful of times, and now you're living here full time, working and serving, uh, what do you see as, uh, I guess you could say, is, is, is a great blessing that Liberia has? I always, you know, have to say that what's drawn me to Liberia is the people. And you know, really the two things, the people and the land. Um, yes, we can say there's not enough food here, but this is good land. Uh, some of the greenest land in all of Africa is right here in Liberia. And when I think about the people in the land, going back to the promise God first made to Abraham, that's what he promised them. He promised them people and land. Hmm. And I find wherever we go as we're spreading the gospel, um, those are the resources God has given us. There is hope for Liberia because these people can receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and they can live it out and they have land that they can work, that they can live on, that they can develop, that they can grow and increase. Okay. And then next, what do you see as, as the biggest challenges you're facing? Well, that, um, you know, could be a, a seminar, but uh, I think the biggest challenge, I'll put it in both physical and spiritual terms, is yeah. change. You know, we are sinful creatures of habit that it's not easy to change. And when it comes to changing from, from sin to walking, um, with the Lord with all of our heart we find that in the villages when the gospel comes discipleship is so critical so that they don't have an integration of their traditional religion and Christianity and when it comes to agriculture that change that it would really last that it would um, transform this nation that it wouldn't just be 
for a short time we did it, but now we're going back to our old habits and our old ways. Yeah. Um, and finally, is there just anything else we haven't covered that you'd like to share? Um, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Uh, pray that the Lord would send more workers into his harvest fields, physically and spiritually. Um, pray for Liberia. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining me on this field trip today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have any questions or any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. And as always, I encourage you to click the subscribe button so that anytime I have a new video coming out, you'll be able to see it. And if you want a notification of every time a new video comes out, which is about once a week or so, uh, just click the bell, ring the bell, ding the bell, dong the bell, punch the bell, flick the bell, beat the bell, whatever it is, you know what I mean. You'll get a notification when I launch a new video. Have a great day. Thanks and bye-bye.